Do you need to know how to configure syslogging in a Linux server? Hi, I'm Daniel Lowry with IT Pro TV, and I'm going to show you what the pros know. Okay, to get our syslog set up, we need to edit the etsy slash rsyslog.conf file. I'll use my favorite editor, which is nano, get in there. There's just a couple of things that we need to take a look at. First is right here, very important, that I'm doing the mod load imudp and then the UDP server run 514. That's telling it two things, that I'm gonna run rsyslog under UDP and at port 514 on UDP. Down a little bit farther, we need to also define a couple of other things, which are, I just added an area, said stuff I added. I'm using a template for remote incoming logs saying, this is the template for how I want this to look. It's gonna save these logs in our, uh, var slash log for me under the host name and then program that it's running. And then dot log the end of it. Star dot star, all the remote incoming logs. And then this little ampersand with the tilde is going to be to stop processing after we've received that. That's on the server side. Server is now basically all set up. Very simple, right? I do want to check and make sure everything is running. So there is a wonderful command. I will get out of nano here. And I've got this in my clipboard. The rsyslogd-f etsy rsyslog.conf dash capital N1 will actually check my etsy rsyslog.conf file for any kind of errors. I've received no error, so I should be good to go. Now we gotta go and set up the client. So let's jump over there. Here's my client. This will be the client that will be sending its log messages back to our rsyslog server. So from here, I will wanna do the same thing, nano slash etsy slash rsyslog.conf and hit enter. And here, we do have a couple of things that we wanna take a look at. Well, actually it's just one thing, it's very important. It's all the way down right here under the stuff I added, right? I just make sure I mark it off for myself, which is star dot star and then where the server is. I give it the IP address and then colon the port number that it should be looking for, which was 514. A couple of other things right below that is the set disk queue when our syslog server will be down. So if the syslog service is not available, what should it do with those logs? And I'll leave this up here for you so you can take a look at that. I have given it a lot of uh, time and effort on descriptions there. But basically we're setting the file name uh, of Q, right? We are setting the max disk space to one gigabyte. So you can make it whatever you need. And then save on shutdown, which I have turned on. And of course the Q type, which is a linked list and a resume retry count, which is infinite retries and in, until failure, okay? So you put those things in there and this side for the client should be good to go. Again, if you need to just pause this and, and watch it as you need to, right? Now that we have that information set up, again, I could run uh, my rsyslogd-f to make sure that this is all working correctly, but I know it is because I've been working with it. From there, I just need to basically wait for these things to happen. Once it's running and the rsyslog daemon is on, which it already is, I can check that by doing something like system ctl of restart or start of rsyslog. It'll probably tell me it's already started or this requires elevated permission. So I'll type that in there. And then it restarted the thing. Also, same thing on the server side. Once all that is going, it should be up and running. And if I go back to my server, I should be able to see that the port is open by using like a netstat, dash antup, or I guess I can use uh, up, anup. And we can see right here, port 514 is listening. That's a good sign for us. And then of course, I can check and see if any of the logs have come in by going to cd slash var slash log. And in there, you should see prod one, because prod one is the name of my client. It has created a folder structure for it. I can CD into prod one. And from there, I can see all the log files that have come in. There they are waiting for me. Now I've got a backup of those. A great thing that we need as far as administration and security, all set up pretty straightforward to get going. Well, I hope that was helpful. And if you want to learn more about Linux administration, check us out at itpro.tv and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Daniel Lowry, and now you know what the pros know.